Lamentation chapter 3 and in verse 22. Lamentation chapter 3 and in verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is is thy faithfulness. Today, we shall look at the mercy of God, value, and secrets. The mercy of God. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Just like the help of God, the mercy of God is a major asset of the child of God. The mercy of God is actually a lifeline for the child of God. We shall first of all look at the, the value of that mercy of God to the life of the child of God. First of all, what is the value? What is the benefit? What is the dividend? What are the, value? What are the dividends? Number one, the mercy of God prevents us from being consumed by the adverse forces of life. The mercy of God prevents us from being consumed. It prevents God's people from being consumed by the adverse forces of life. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. What is the meaning? The mercy of God is the reason why you cannot be finished. Nothing can finish you. Nothing can swallow us up. Nothing can eat us up. It is by the Lord's mercies that this lockdown or open up, whatever it is, that we are not consumed. If you are associated with the mercy of God, you don't fear for your life. You don't fear for your future. You don't fear nothing. Because it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. The meaning of that is, if it is not the mercy of God, who would have been finished since? Who would have been finished since? Finished by diverse situations. Finished by diverse circumstances. Finished by diverse issues. The mercy of God prevents us from being consumed by the adverse forces of life. Mm. Oh Lord, I do not place my faith in my own right. Oh Lord, I place my faith in your mercy. For your mercy is my help in the end.
we are not consumed by virtue of his mercy. Number two, the mercy of God shields us from the anger of the enemy. The anger of our enemies it shields us. Psalm 136 is a big psalm that deals with the issue of the mercy of God. Psalm 136 verse 24 it says he has redeemed us from our enemies for his mercy endured forever. He redeemed us from our enemies for his mercy endureth forever. The mercy of God shields us from the anger of our enemies. The reason why what the enemies plan couldn't happen, cannot happen, will not happen is the mercy of God. The psalmist said in Psalm 18 verse 3, I will call upon the Lord for he is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The mercy of God shields us. In our place he said, if bad look can kill Chickens may not survive, some of them. <laughs> uh, there are those with very terrible bad will, terrible wishes. If it was left for wishes and the mercy of God wasn't involved, many of us wouldn't be alive. Some people wish you out of this life longest time, but you are still here by the mercy of God. The mercy of God shields us from the anger of our enemies, from the expectations of our enemies, from the wrath of the enemy. Thirdly, the mercy of God rescues us from the misery, or rather from misery and affliction in life. It rescues us from misery it is his message that pull you out of infirmity, out of even poverty, penury, misery. The mercy of God rescues us from misery and affliction in life. That was the case of blind Bartimaeus. He was both blind and poor. He sat by the roadside in Jericho. In Mark chapter 10 verse 47 to 48. And he says, Thou son of David, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy. That is, I'm tired of this begging. I am tired of this darkness. Rescue me from this misery. Rescue me from this suffering out of your mercy. And that mercy pulled him out. And that mercy is pulling you out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, the mercy of God. releases direction for our lives. The mercy of God releases direction for our lives. The mercy of God causes God not to leave us to ourselves because he knows that if he leaves us to ourselves we will mess up our lives. His mercy brings us direction, guidance, his mercy causes him to be involved in our lives if we are willing to be involved in our affairs. Psalm 136 and in verse 16, the Bible said, He led them to him which led them, led his people through the wilderness for his mercy endured forever. You see, 
he led his people through the wilderness. Out of mercy was the leading. Divine direction will come as a product of divine mercy. God, in mercy, will not leave you to marry the wrong wife or marry the wrong husband or end in the wrong destination if you will subscribe to that mercy. The mercy of God releases direction for our lives. Number five, the mercy of God releases, unleashes his judgment to the enemies of his people. The mercy of God unleashes the judgment of God on the enemies of his people. The mercy of God unleashes the judgment of God on the enemies of God's people. The mercy of God for one equals the judgment of God on another. Psalm 136 verse, verse 17 to verse 22. 136 verse 17, it said, To him which smote great kings for his mercy, you see, endure it forever. He slew famous kings for his mercy, endure it forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his mercy, endure it forever. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy, endure it forever. And gave their land for an heritage, for his mercy, endure it forever. Even an heritage unto Israel's servant for his mercy endure it forever. He was having mercy on Israel and dealing with the enemies of Israel out of his mercy. The mercy of God on one is the unleashing of his judgment on another. The mercy of God. What is the value or the dividend of the mercy of God? Number six. The mercy of God causes God to remember his people in their low estate. It causes God to remember his people in their low estate. In their down time. When times, things are down. Times of recession. Times of depression, lockdown. In Psalm 136, verse 23, it talks about how he remembered. Who remembered us in our low estate? For his mercy endured forever. He remembers us when things are low, when things are slow. He remembers us. When we are down. He remembers us. When it appears like we are, we are living life in the valley. He remembers us. When there is a need to pull us up. He remembers us. When the mood is low and the, and the excitement is down because of things happening around. He remembers us. Is it not exciting, beloved, to, re to, to realize that in this situation you have found, we have found ourselves globally that the mercy of God can cause you to be remembered and be pulled up. It is very exciting and interesting to know that God has not forgotten you, has not and will not forget you because he remembers us in our low estate. Wow. What will the mercy of God do for us? Number seven. The mercy of God shields us from the consequences of wrong actions and errors. The consequences. It shields us. It shields us from the consequences of wrong actions and errors. No wonder scripture said, if thou would mark iniquity, who would stand? That is, if every single mistake a person makes, you follow them to deal with them, who can survive? You remember the story of the woman caught in adultery in John chapter 8, from verse 1 all the way to verse 11. 
Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst of them, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. I'll stop there because it's a long reading. Moses said we should stone her. What do you say? Jesus said, <laughs> Any of you that is without sin, cast her the first stone. Because it was hypocrisy. How can the woman be caught in adultery in the very act? Where is the second actor? Where is the second person? Must have been a Pharisee and a scribe like one of them that set the woman up and to set Jesus up. How wicked the heart of man can be. Miserable. Caught in the very act means she was probably literally brought out naked. Jesus looked at the hardness of their heart and said, If any of you have not seen before, and actually the trap was not just for the woman. The trap was for Jesus. They wanted to hear what he would say. There was no answer he would give that would be a correct answer. If they stone her, they would say, I thought you say you are the Messiah who came to save people. You are a liar. Then they would descend on him. If he it, if it said, don't stone her, then they would say, you have broken the law of Moses. You shall be stoned to death for saying that the law of Moses should not hold. So it was a trap, not just for the woman, but for the master. And Jesus looked and said, Any of you that have not seen before, cast the first stone. And he bent down and started writing on the ground. Some people think maybe he was writing their sins on the ground. And the Bible said, they began to live from the eldest who has been sinning for a very long time. They left one by one until the woman was left alone. And he said, woman, where are thine accusers? And he said, I can't see any of them. He said, neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. What mercy? What mercy saved that woman's life? What mercy restored her dignity as a woman? What mercy shielded her? That is mercy. But let me add to this. The mercy of God does not mean taking God for granted. It doesn't mean living in sin. Living, Jesus, Jesus didn't say, go and live as, as you want to do. Go and live the way you want. He said, go and sin no more. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. To a blind man, he said, go and sin no more in case a worse thing comes upon you. When you take the mercy of God for granted, you end up as a mess in life. You will end up in the mess. You kept on doing the same thing and kept on asking God for mercy. At the end, you just mess up your life and destiny. For this mercy to stand, don't do it again. But God shields us from the consequences of wrong actions and errors. In case the situation in the world today has been brought about by the rebellion of the earth. Because in the days of Noah, when the earth rebelled, the flood came. Like it would destroy the world. In Sodom and Gomorrah, when they le lived very riotously, they died very dangerously. In case, whatever we are facing today on the earth is a function of the rebellion of man towards God. It's a function of human independence of God. Self-sufficiency. Capacity. We can survive without God. We have money. We have oil. We have this. We have that. Then, the mercy of God can shield our generation from degeneration and from instant destruction. The mercy of God can shield our generational wrong actions if we apply for it and shield our errors, shield our independence. And when it is time to pray shortly now, I'd like you to call and cry out for that mercy. What have we said so far that the mercy of God will do? First, that the mercy of God.
prevents God's people from being consumed. It prevents us from being consumed consumed by the adverse forces of life. From being consumed by, by the adverse forces of life. It, it prevents us from being consumed by the adverse, the negative things around can swallow us up when they are swallowing others up. Second, the mercy of God shields us from the anger of our enemies. People who wish us dead couldn't succeed by his mercy. The mercy of God shields us, rescues us from misery and affliction in life. It's possible that you have prayed for healing and prayed for deliverance that you haven't seen. Can apply for mercy. Lord, in this condition, have mercy. Whatever it is, I ask for your mercy. Like blind Bastinius, have mercy on me. And then the mercy of God releases direction for our lives. God does not leave us to ourselves to spoil ourselves, to, to finish our lives. In his mercy, he will pull us from wrong steps, wrong, wrong moves. The mercy of God unleashes the judgment of God on the enemies of God's people. He doesn't only shield us from the wrath of our enemies. He unleashes judgment on them. The mercy of God causes God to remember us in our low estate. Maybe you are there watching right now. You and your children, you don't know what to eat. You don't know what, how to fare. But we hear that organizations are laying staff off because they are not making money. Or they are not making profit. They are not making fat, nothing. So they are unable to pay people. And then, Probably you are in your low estate there right now. The mercy of God remembers us at our low moments of life. And the mercy of God is what shields us from the consequences of wrong actions and errors. Not deliberate sins, not willful sins. Wrong actions, errors, missteps, misdeeds. The mercy of God is what shields us. Please take note of the following. If the message this morning or this afternoon is not going to be too long, take a special note of the following and it is based on our scripture. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 20, 23, 22 to 23. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning great is thy faithfulness from that scripture take a special note of the following number one everyone who is under the mercy of god is never at the mercy of anybody and anything under heaven Anyone who is under the mercy of God is never at the mercy of anyone and anything under heaven. If you are under the mercy of God, you can never be at the mercy of the devil, at the mercy of witches, at the mercy of witchcraft, at the mercy of negative situations on the earth. That's why it says, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. That is, if you are connected to his mercy, you are preserved. You are never at the mercy of any other thing. Second, the compassion of God, which compels his action, <laughs> never fails. The compassion of God, which compels his action, never fails. Compassion is actually that which compels action. It never fails. That was what the scripture told us. His compassions never fail. That is, anybody can fail. Anything can fail. But his compassion never fail. Do you know that there are times people love you, but they can't help you? For example, you got admission to go and school in America. Scholarship is $12,000 or $14,000 or something. You have a father or a mother who love you deeply, want the best for you, 
But at that moment, it, their, their love for you couldn't help. How, how they wish they could have helped. But not God. His compassion has no capacity of failure. His compassion has the backing of his resources. Ay, 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 ay. His compassion has the backing of his wisdom. His compassion has the backing of his power. Three things I mentioned. His compassion has the backing of his resources. His compassion has the backing of his wisdom. His compassion has the backing of his power. So it has no capacity to fail. His compassion can't be defeated. His compassion can suffer defeat. His compassion cannot be unsuccessful. That that is God loves such a person so much he wants to help but he's helpless. No way. His compassions, the compassion of God, which compels his actions, never fail. The compassion of God, which compels his actions, never fail. Thirdly, the compassion of God never expire. The Bible said they are new every morning. The compassion of God never expire. They are new every morning. They are new every morning means it cannot run out. It cannot run out. The love of God cannot expire. It cannot run out. What's the meaning? God does not love you less today than yesterday. If you have ever experienced the love of God at any time in your life, it is not less now. He can't love you yesterday and hate you today. Except you have done things that displease him. And he will rebuke you and chastise you. And if you repent, he would still pull you to himself. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. With my loving kindness have I drawn you. And you shall be drawn. That looks like Jeremiah 31 verse 3. Or oh, 30 verse 3. I have loved you with an everlasting with my loving uh, 31 3 the lord has appeared of all to me saying i have loved you with an everlasting love therefore with my loving kindness have i drawn you i've lo i love you with an unchanging love i love you with a finishless love you can take it off now if a love that can't finish a love that cannot expire the compassion of god they never expire. They can't run out. They are new every morning. If he loved you yesterday, he's loving you today. He will love you tomorrow. Finally, number four note from that scripture. The faithfulness in bracket reliability of God in bracket reliability bracket closed the faithfulness that is the reliability of God is immeasurable great is thy faithfulness is immeasurable immeasurable measureless massive great is thy faithfulness God is reliable. God is dependable. God is trustworthy. And that trustworthiness is immeasurable. There are some who can be trusted to a certain point and you can't trust them anymore. It's immeasurable. Hallelujah. I see the mercy of God functioning for us, for you, for our nation, for our generation, for our families, for our churches right now. In the name of Jesus. What are the keys to his mercy? Secrets of God's mercy. Are you interested? Number one. Thanking him for his
his mercies. Thanking him for his mercies. The mercies you have experienced before. Thanking God for the mercies you have experienced before will multiply his mercies. You know, appreciation brings multiplication. Anything you thank God for multiplies. When Jesus thanked God for five loaves and two fishes, they multiplied in John chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. Psalm 106 and in verse 1, it tells us of bless ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 108 verse, sorry, 118 verse 1. Also, maybe all, all the way to verse 3. Psalm 118 verse 1. Give thanks unto the Lord for his good because his mercy endureth forever. Lest Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Pharaoh now say that his mercy endureth forever. Baseline. Give thanks to God for his mercies. Have you experienced any mercy? Yes. You have experienced mercy. That's why you are alive. That's why some people wish you we shoot disaster and yet you are on your feet. That is why you finish school. Thank God for any mercy you have seen. And you will multiply mercy in your life. Thanking God for his mercies. Number two is asking God for his mercies. Asking. Blind Bartimaeus cried out, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. He cried out for mercy. Mark chapter 10, verse 47 to 48. He cried for mercy. And mercy came. Lord, I apply for your mercy. Lord, I applied for your mercy. Some people even tried to sh shut him up. He cried out the more. Lord, I apply for your mercy. Lord, I subscribe to your mercy. Lord, without your mercy, I can do nothing. Lord, I apply for your mercy. Lord, mercy, Lord. Especially when you are in the midst of situations and danger and disasters. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Asking God for his mercy. It's secret. Let it be a regular part of your prayer. My prayer schedule includes application for mercy consistently. Number three, showing mercy to others. Showing mercy to others connects you with mercy from God for what a man sows, he shall reap. Psalm 18, verse 25. He said, with the merciful, thou will show yourself merciful. With an upright man, thou will show yourself upright. With the merciful, thou will show yourself merciful. With the upright man, thou will show yourself upright. Very, very important. Very, very important. Mercy. Showing mercy to others. That scripture is repeated in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 26. With the merciful, thou will show yourself merciful. And with the upright man, thou will show yourself upright. There are people who are so heartless. Not just towards strangers, towards their wife, children, mother, father, brothers, sisters. Heartless to their neighbors. You will never be able to see mercy from God if you don't know what it means to give mercy to others. Bitter can never forgive. Showing mercy to others is a secret of mercy from God. And finally, number four, taking pleasure in Zion. Psalm 102, verse 13 to verse 14. Psalm 102 said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yeah, the set time has come. 
For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. Taking pleasure in Zion. It also means favoring the cause of God. Favoring. Favoring. Involvement in kingdom expansion and enlargement. Take pleasure in the stones of Zion in the dust. Stones are used for construction. Dust is used for construction. Stone dust. Sand. Favoring the cause of God. Involvement in kingdom building. Evangelism. Soul winning. In-house kingdom service. Investment of resources into kingdom enlargement. Into, into the cause of the kingdom, the growth of the kingdom, the, 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 the expansion of the kingdom. You are enjoying the Dunamis television right now. And everything that has to do with making this broadcast go around the world has to continue happening. The broadcast costs, satellite costings, all that it costs to take this into the air in millions monthly without asking anybody for a dime. There is no program on Dynamics TV that is paid for by anybody. That is if you saw Kenneth Copeland or you saw Bill Winston or you saw any other program there. No one pays a dime. All over the world, America, everywhere they are watching. You can make up your mind, I want to be a part of making the kingdom to spread around the earth. Enlarging the kingdom. Involvement. Taking pleasure in Zion. Favoring the cause of God. It positions people for mercy. That was what happened to the centurion in Luke chapter 7. When Jesus, when his servant was sick from verse 2, 3. The centurion's servant who was there unto him was read, sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he will come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy. This man deserves this mercy. For whom you should do this? Why? For he loved our nation. He has built us a synagogue. And what did Jesus say? And Jesus went with them. You know, mercy is what delivers from misery and affliction, like I said earlier on. My servant needs deliverance from this misery and this affliction. And I want the mercy of the master to heal him. And the qualification is, only him built a synagogue, a church. And Jesus said, let's go. Beloved, if you will thank God for mercies you have seen around you, and you will ask God and apply in your helplessness, continually asking for his mercy. You will show mercy to others and you will take pleasure in Zion. You can't run out of mercy. It's a new day. It's a new day. And it's a new day. In Jesus' precious name. Wherever you are, be upstanding and lift up your hands and your voice and let's appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the I am that I am and the Rose of Sharon and the Lily of the Valley. Blessed be your name, Jehovah Mekadesh, Jehovah Rufeka, Jehovah Karen Yesha, we love you, we honor you, we adore you. Blessed be your name, honor to your name, adoration to your name. Thank you, thank you. In Jesus' precious name.